I just love to talk. <laughs> so awful. I'm going to tell you a very short and a true story about my own family. We're all immigrants. My grandmother was from Poland, Polish Jew. She saw things were getting bad, she got out. <laughs> Raised her kids to be Americans. 400 relatives in Europe didn't get out. When that war broke out, World War II, in Poland in 1939, this woman, who was about 40 years old at the time, went down to the recruiting station in Wilmington, tried to enlist, and they laughed at her. She kept coming back every month and tried to enlist, and they laughed less and less as the news got worse and worse for Europe. On December 7, 1941, the anniversary is today, the United States entered war against Japan, and Germany declared war on America, she went down to enlist. The lines were blocks long. When she got up there, they said, no, little mother, because that's what they, they call her with respect. A very small person, not five foot tall. We can't take you in the military. But a week later, a government sedan pulled up at my grandmother's house, and they said, do you want to work? And she said, I can enlist. And they said, no, but we have a job. And they took her over to the shipyards at Marcus Hook, which is just uh, on the, up the Delaware from Wilmington, where they were starting Liberty ships. Henry Kaiser was building ships to help our troops for the anticipated invasion of Europe. She learned how to become a welder. And in a very short time, she became a foreman of welders. She would urge those men who were too old or too unfit to be in active service, to weld faster and better welds, to build more ships. And, it, and we won that war, but of 400 relatives that we had, were her relatives. Two, two survived. One was a little five-year-old girl at Auschwitz, and the Nazis just did not have time to get to her. Believe me, they tried, but with the Soviets closing in, from the east and Patton's armies from the west, uh, they just couldn't get everybody. And by the way, it wasn't just Jews. They killed a larger percentage of gypsies in Europe. They killed uh, Russians, they killed Poles, they killed Catholics, they killed Protestants, they killed anyone who stood in their way. Fast forward to 1968, just a little while after the Seven Days War in Israel, that little five-year-old girl, my cousin Genya, Jenny as we called her, she had made her way through the displaced person camps to Israel, was there when it became a state, married, had children, served in the IDF, and she came to visit my grandmother, one of her only living relatives in Wilmington. And there I was, a bright little boy, who thought I knew what was going on. You have to understand, my grandmother was like your grandmother. I was the smartest, prettiest, most handsome, most wonderful boy that ever existed in the history of the whole world, just like you were to your grandma. So I was sitting with my cousin Jenny, and I saw the numbers tattooed on her arm. Bright boy that I was, I reached out and touched those numbers, and I said, I know what those are. You don't have to worry. You're an American. You're safe can't happen. And something happened. And it was like she was sitting there, but she wasn't even there. Her whole personality just disappeared. She sat there blank. And I thought, what is wrong with her? But it wasn't her, it was me. After a minute, she left the room. About 20 minutes later, my grandmother came in. Remember, this is the woman who who would always eat something, Danny. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh, you're so smart. She didn't say a word. She walked over to me and she raised her arm. And the first time I'd ever had that from her, she brought it down and smacked me so hard across the face, she knocked me to the floor. She picked me up, held me inches from her face. We we're both crying at this point. And said, it can't happen here. 
what do you think we, we thought in Poland? Do you think we were uncivilized, uncultured? Do you think we imagined that it could happen here? That a, a country with theaters and restaurants, with operas and universities, with jobs and factories, that it could happen there? No, they never imagined it. And we're not imagining it happening here. But I'll tell you right now, it's, we're on the exact same path yep. Yep. that the Nazis took, that the Soviets took, that the Chinese communists took, and forget ideology, the same damn path that Idi Amin took, and he was just crazy. Yep. Yep. I pulled some items from the news this morning off of the Drudge Report. These are just headlines. This is just, these aren't the most important things. These aren't the only things. This is today's headlines. Obama dismisses the IRS targeting of conservative groups. It wasn't just conservative groups. Federal power to intimidate and punish political opponents included groups like True the Vote which simply wants fair, free elections and doesn't care who wins. Groups that educate the Constitution and have been vetted by the American Bar Association for accuracy and just simply teach in schools were targeted. No press uproar this time. The IRS has just announced strict new limits on political speech. That's 501c4s. That's nonprofit groups. They're going to permit certain types of speech in the election next year. I didn't think our First Amendment included that power, but that includes those groups, plus pro-life, plus pro-gun, plus anybody who isn't pro-progressive. Another headline, TSA expands checkpoints. They could put a checkpoint on that corner. Anywhere and everywhere you travel, they can have a stop and sh show us your papers. Disobey. Does that sound like America? No, no, no. no. They can search and seize what's in your car or your person without warrant, without probable cause. They don't have to smell liquor or pot on your breath. They don't have to see a handgun sticking out of the console and ask if you have a permit. They don't have to do anything except what they want. They can stop you, and they're doing this, and put you in a line and take DNA samples off of you. Here's another one. The TSA affirms that within a 100-mile radius of the border, it's a constitution-free zone. What's next? 100 miles of the coastline? That means this is a constitutional-free zone. We're less than 100 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. What is it next? Federal buildings? I think there's a federal building within four blocks of here. And then federal lands? Is there any other place in this country that is a constitution-free zone? Where can we have our constitution? Another headline, more airports are installing these things called TSA detention pods. I don't know if you've heard of them. Everybody's used to going into cattle shoots when you go to a concert, when you go to a bank, and it's, it's just crowd control to keep everyone in a reasonable line. It's not terror, but it is when you're going through airport security. And you go through this line, and what it ends up in is this secure, bulletproof booth that you go into and it locks you in until they determine that they want to release you. You are a prisoner without having committed a crime. That's men, that's women, that's children, that's white, black, yellow, and brown. Here's another one. Federal prison population up 27% in one decade. They're going to run out of room in those prisons soon. What's next? FEMA camps? They've been building them. They're activating them. <coughs> These federally unelected bureaucrats, through regulation, have criminal penalties attached. You can make a guitar with a piece of wood. You can import some fish. And they can lock you up. Good luck having due process. Speaking of due process, you're all familiar with the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which is a normal 
thing in normal years that simply appropriates money for our national defense. Nothing wrong with that. But the provisions under the Patriot Act and NDAA now per permit due process in court to be replaced, according to Attorney General Holder, with due process in the administration, which simply means that the president and his secret advisors, whoever they might be, have determined that they've given you due process, you're guilty of a crime, they can search you, seize you, indefinitely detain you without charge, without trial, and without penalty for lying to a federal judge when the judge says, habeas corpus, produce this man at 9 a.m. Monday morning in my court, show good cause as to why he should continue to be held. They can say, Dan Gray, we don't know who he is. We've never heard of him. And they're not guilty of a crime under that law, but they are guilty of a crime under our Constitution. So, to close, there are two things going on this week that I would urge you to be active on. Call all your friends, your Facebook buddies, Twitter, everybody you know, your family. One is local, one is national. Senate Bill 999 here in Pennsylvania. Call your state senators. This is, in effect, nullification of this NDAA and Patriot Act. It says we will not comply, we will not allow you to use our facilities, we will not assist you. The whole reason that prohibition went bust in 1933 was because states and local municipalities would not comply. They knew there were bars, they did nothing. The feds do not have the power unless we allow them to. Keep them out! Now the other thing is, uh, and this is a state, uh, excuse me, a federal deal, call your federal senators, call Casey and Toomey, call them, and politely yell at them. Yeah. <laughs> they are going to be uh, looking at Ch Chuck Schumer's invisible gun bill, as I call it, the undetectable gun ban. Yeah. Sounds good. We don't want plastic guns that can go through metal detectors, even though, except for what the CIA may have, they don't really exist. What it is, is every one of you here who has a weapon, has any plastic on it, that's already in the bill. That's a felony right there. They don't have to tell you anything. If you don't replace that with a wooden stock and destroy that, that plastic stock, uh, you're going to go to jail. Pirates! And you know what happens in Washington when they pass a bill. They only publicize the bill, not the amendments. They're going to tack on amendments. If this thing passes, and quite frankly, Casey will vote for it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So it cause him pain. And Toomey might vote for it because the last time he tried this, we caused him pain. Yes. In 2014, we have the opportunity to elect and I don't care if they're Democrats, I don't care if they're Republicans, right. Libertarians, Constitutional Party, as I am, or Ron Paulites, or Green Party, I don't care what they call themselves, we have the opportunity to elect men and women of conscience who don't want the job, who don't want the power, but who are willing to step up, and all I require, and all you should require, is two things. Willingness to adhere to our Constitution, and fiscal common sense. Yeah. In the meantime, if they won't, cause them pain. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Woo. you. Thank you. Great job. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Make sure you all call. Let your voices be heard. John Rentschler lives outside of Douglasville, which is past Pottstown. He was the organizer for this rally. He came down with some medical problems this morning, so thank you all for coming here and supporting him anyway. And remember him, if you're friends with him on Facebook, shoot him a message. So now I'd like to introduce Steve Petrosky, a co-founder.